Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for May 30th, 2012. On this week's show, a tabletop laser makes precise cuts in brain tissue, a dopant breaks the solar efficiency record in graphene, a simple optochemical sensor relies on light, plasmonics creates an invisible photo detector, and we remember Elias Snitzer, the father of the glass laser. Researchers at the Max Born Institute for Nonlinear Optics and Short Pulse Spectroscopy have developed a tabletop solid state laser system that could cut brain tissue with unprecedented precision. The new laser emits short pulses at exactly 6.45 microns, which is considered optimal for such surgical procedures and could previously only be generated with huge free electron lasers, not solid state ones. Its repetition rate is 100 to 200 hertz, which ensures the average target power of over one watt. The penetration depth at this wavelength is on the order of several microns, which is comparable to the cell size and is therefore close to the optimum value. The researchers intend to further optimize the new tabletop laser, assess its tissue ablation capabilities, and possibly follow up with a demonstration of a real solid state laser surgery at 6.45 microns. Chemically treating graphene has upped the material's solar power conversion efficiency from 2.9% to a record-breaking 8.6%. Researchers at the University of Florida have doped graphene with trifluoromethane sulfonyl amide, or TFSA. Unlike previous doping agents, TFSA is a stable compound, so its effects are longer lasting. It also improves the electrical properties of the graphene, making it better at converting sunlight into electricity. Some gallium arsenide semiconductor solar cells have reached efficiencies of 43%, but the researchers believe that if their cheaper, easier to produce graphene solar cells could reach an efficiency of 10%, they would be a commercial contender. The work has been published online in Nano Letters. Using only the interaction between nanostructures and light, an optochemical sensor is safer, simpler, and more reliable than standard electrical ones. Researchers with the EU-funded DotSense project created an optical transducer using an array of a billion gallium nitride and indium gallium nitride quantum dots within nanowires. They placed the wires in a liquid gaseous environment and used light to induce changes in the photoluminescence properties of the nanostructures. The changes occur depending on the specific chemicals in the environment, leading to variations in the transducer's light intensity, which can be read using common photo detectors. Applications include aircraft sensing, home smoke alarms, health care, and food processing. In a spin-off project called Synomics, part of the research team will continue developing the technology. For the first time, plasmonic cloaking has been used to create an invisible light detecting device. It can sense light without being seen. This could lead to a new class of devices that controls the flow of light at the nanoscale to produce both optical and electronic functions. By adjusting the ratio of metal to silicon in gold-covered silicon nanowires, a technique called tuning the geometries, engineers at Stanford and the University of Pennsylvania capitalized on destructive interference to get the light reflected from the two materials to cancel itself out, making the device invisible. The engineers demonstrated that the plasmonic cloak is effective across much of the visible spectrum and that the effect works regardless of the angle of the incoming light or the shape and placement of the metal-covered nanowires in the device. They also showed that common computer chip metals such as aluminum and copper work just as well as gold. They are hopeful that the device could be used for applications in solar cells, solid-state lighting, sensors, chip-scale lasers, imaging systems, and more. The study appeared online in Nature Photonics. Laser pioneer Dr. Elias Snitzer, inventor of the glass laser, the fiber laser, and the fiber amplifier, died on May 21st after a sudden illness. He was 87 years old. Snitzer's contributions to photonics research spanned more than four decades and helped bring about the fiber optics technology on which the internet and other communication systems operate. Known as the father of the glass laser, Snitzer demonstrated the first optical fiber laser in 1961, a year after Ted Maiman reported the first crystalline laser based on ruby. His inventions include both neodymium and erbium-doped laser glass, and he co-developed the first fiber optic laser amplifier with laser glass. At Polaroid, Snitzer invented the double-cladded glass fiber, thereby facilitating optical pumping of fiber lasers and amplifiers. After Polaroid, he worked at Rutgers University, where he continued to teach and to research fiber laser amplifiers and glass and fiber brag gratings until his retirement in 2001. Dr. Snitzer's work meant a great deal to the photonics community, and his contributions will not be forgotten. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the industry's only weekly newscast. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters.photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.